morning, Garrett. Yes, is this Roger? This is Roger. How you doing? Good. How are you today? I just got back from the gym. Uh, you know, it gets harder and harder as you get older and older, but the good news is we can still do it. <laughs> so you got a minute to <laughs> chat today then? Yeah, as long as you need. I've got at least an hour. Okay. Well, um, you... but we could, we could, I could probably tell you my life story in five minutes. It's been great. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess uh, you're 71 this year, correct? Yeah, I was 71. Be 72 next year. So, do you see any rebirth in your thought process, or maybe full circle moments these days? <laughs> um, you know, we're we're doing a. Um, a bunch of dates with uh, Jeff Foxworthy and Larry the Cable Guy, which is um, somewhat of a departure from what we've normally done. And I have to tell you, I can't remember the last time I had so much fun. These guys are just absolute sweethearts, and it's just, it was just a gas. It was terrific. How, how did that pairing come about? Um, apparently, well, uh, there was... Um, a promoter who promoted this last year and we did a show out in the desert in California with a whole bunch of uh, younger bands and the promoter said you guys are great um, maybe we could uh, do something with some other people and came up and that's it the band plays great um, you know we can re we, everybody can play and like the music for some reason has uh, stood the test of time uh, it's only rock and roll but I like it. <laughs> somebody, somebody else wrote that one, though, didn't they? <laughs> yeah. um, um, and I have to admit, I was a little uh, dubious about it at the beginning, you know, before we met everybody. But when I got, we got to the first show, and I, and my manager Linda had posted uh, that Larry was learning to play the drums. So I knocked on his dressing room door. And gave him a pair of drumsticks and told him that um, I, I give drum lessons for three thousand dollars an hour. <laughs> <laughs> he, he gave me a look and I said, "No, just kidding." Uh, but they, uh, him and Jeff, are absolute riots and just just absolute sweethearts. I mean, they really are. It's um, I really enjoyed myself. Everybody and they got up and jammed with us on. Uh, slow ride so that was fun yeah I saw a video of that floating around the internet I thought that was pretty cool it was um, you know we invited him up and uh, Larry played guitar and then he puts the guitar down and then he comes up and plays drums with me on the end of slow ride and uh, Jeff uh, dances around the stage with our bass player yeah. and sings uh, yeah it's uh, it's fun you know music and laughter uh I don't think life gets much better without those two things. In fact, if your life doesn't have any music or laughter in it, you're a miserable fucking bastard, right? <laughs> <laughs> or, or, or maybe you have no friends and that's why you're a miserable bastard. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, yeah, life is good. Life is good. Well, do you see any, um, I guess, maybe rebirth in, in, in how you view the world and your life and life itself? Um, no, it's it's, um, it's pretty much the same. My wife accuses me of acting like a 16-year-old sometimes, but I think secretly she enjoys it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's that childlike wonder that, that, that makes great music, you know? Yeah. Um, actually, I was always fortunate, even from like, the very beginning when I first st played in my first band. It was... Um, with some friends I went to school with and uh, they had a band before I started playing and I joined them when I was 17 and uh, me and the bass player were best friends at school and the lead singer Ray Dorsett uh, went on to become the lead singer in a band called Mungo Jerry with my brother yep. and I always played with real good players so I think that helped uh, you know raise the bar or keep it up there um, and then I joined Savoy Brown when I was 20 I believe and they, they were already an established band in London um, uh, so yeah I think that, that helped you know if you play with great players and I always played in bands <coughs> that played the kind of music that I enjoyed you know blues rock and roll you know rhythm and blues so 
uh, I guess I was fortunate in that. But there again, that's what I wanted to do. I didn't play in bands that played uh, what would be termed the popular music of the day. So in some ways, I kind of missed out on it because everybody else I know who's who's played, they played in bands that have done either you know contemporary music or, or, or the contemporary for the time and played you know other band stuff whereas i didn't do that um you know a couple of songs were done by other people but we always did our own arrangements to them so you know i gained something from it and i think i also missed out because now i uh i i do a number of like uh benefits or whatever you want to call them for people if that somebody's in trouble or uh, you know somebody needs a few greenies uh, you know i'll turn up and play and then i've got to learn these songs so you know they, they give me a list of songs they're playing and i go oh all right so, <laughs> I sit at home. I'm, I'm, I'm doing homework at 71 years old uh, that's all right i don't think you ever really forget uh of you know uh, or rather not forget but you don't you don't ever know everything you there's always time and a place to learn something new well, I think that's what's great about life too. It's a, it's a Keith Richards said that in that new documentary that you're not grown up until they put you six feet under. <laughs> Keith, he's got to be a piece of work, isn't he? Yeah. Well, it's funny that you mentioned the thing about about pursuing blues and rock and roll rather than pop because I it, I guess in my perspective that that would show why your music is still relevant today, especially touring because. With the blues, it only gets better with age, at least for my opinion. Yeah, and you know, and it's um, you know, one of the things that I, I think a number of uh, folks in the states don't quite realize is that you know, America gave music to the world, and and, and it has ever since uh, you know, like the turn of the century, you know, with blues, jazz, yeah. bebop. Um, and even even all the way through, you know, um, and especially like the, the, the uh, late forties, fifties, and sixties, there was like a huge amount of music going on, and uh, and it crept over to Europe, you know, via you know the GIs and stuff, um, you know, big band music, and the same for me, you know, I grew up listening to you know Jerry D. Lewis, Little Richard, uh, Elvis Presley's early stuff on Sun Records, and. Uh, you know, then I got into Muddy Waters and John Lee Hooker and stuff like that. <clears throat> and even today, you know, you've got Iraqi rappers, Israeli rappers, Chinese rappers, Korean. You know, I mean, I'm talking about con contemporary music. So yeah. even to this day, America influences the world, the, the world of music. So, and, you know, and, and jazz is like, you know, I don't think jazz players earn the money that they're due, but... It's very popular in you know in Japan, in uh, France, in Spain. They you know they have jazz clubs. Yeah. So it's uh, and they you know they, they it's always American musicians that they're looking to book. So uh, yeah, America gave music to the world. That's why I live there. That's why I live there. Well, I, someone had talked to me about what I thought about why the Stones were still relevant today, and I said a big reason was is that they had the big thread of blues going through them that. It might seem a little hokey to listen to a pop band when you're in your 60s, remembering those songs from being a kid. Whereas with the Stones, it's still blues is always going to be just that 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 music that evolves. It's always going to be cool, you know. <laughs> yeah, um, you know, uh, Lonesome Dave, our original lead singer, once said, I don't know if it was a direct quote, but he said. Um, you know, was, he was asked, you know, you know, what, why he thought blues music was relevant. He said, because it's honest. Yeah. And there is a certain honesty, there's a simplicity to it. I mean, when you see the billboards, you know, I woke up this morning, uh, <laughs> just every blues song started that way. But that's, why not? You know, you wake up and, and you start dealing with the world. You start, and then you either write or you, you, tell stories about it or you're involved in it so uh, yeah woke up this morning well it's like it's like the time. music of the human condition <laughs> yeah yeah and uh we have to thank uh america for that <laughs> well you had mentioned uh savoy brown and you know the the mass exodus of of that band created fog hat i was wondering what what led to that exodus 
And uh, what was the deal with Savoy Brown? Why didn't that go any further? Um, well, we uh, there was a, it was it was I think it was just time for a change. I mean, uh, you know, I'm still very good friends with Kim Simmons, and he get he played on our last album, and I get up and jam with him at any chance I get. I did about a month ago. We got up and played like three songs in. What we playing Harrisburg, I think. Or Reading, Pennsylvania, something like that, and uh, it was just time for a change. Um, they had a, we were getting like a hundred bucks a week, and the band was earning between you know ten and fifteen grand a night. So <laughs> <laughs> it didn't seem it didn't seem quite right. Uh, it was just time. But actually, what happened was the bass player got fired. He was always getting fired, or he was breaking the band up. But <laughs> Dave and I were always pretty tight. It was, it was always about the music. And uh, it was just time for a change. Um, and we stayed and said, look, we'll stay until, uh, you know, you get the new band together. We even did some rehearsals when we got back to England the following year. Um, but we told the manager, it was Kim's brother at the time, that we were leaving. And he told us that we'd never work again, which he tried to stop everything we tried to do. We couldn't work in England. Uh, but I think he got arrested and put in jail for something. So, you know, karma. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it, once again, things worked out all right. Um, our first album got finished and um, it was released over here and we had a hit with I Just Want to Make Love to You. I mean, uh, so that was a good start. 